So I think let's go. Yeah. Let's go. And Warren said they didn't really want to do what I thought they were going sure. to do. But let's go through the first. So if you want to shift them all, uh, Warren, you'll be the jumper. We don't okay. want to hurt you. You <laughs> want to hurt you already? Give him the ball. Uh, you the supporter. Let's play. Let's just make sure. Let's play that way. So we're yep. playing that way. You a supporter. So the one way to do a shift is almost we to get the ball and then rip it, transfer it here, sure. and now we drive here. So I thought that's what the Lions wanted to do, but sure. they said no, they didn't want it to do it. But sure. that's the one way. The other way, and that's what the Crusaders do. They use their second guy that comes in, you try in there. He doesn't go there. This guy will go here. This guy will move here. And this guy will almost pivot. And they will try and yeah. get that. And as we saw against, um, I think the Highlanders, and the Highlanders, the yeah. Hurricanes scored a try in the front of the mall mm -hmm. like that. So again, the Lions will have to have their thinking cap on when sure. they think about how they're going to stop the um, Crusaders more as well. Maybe Warren can give us more about their mall and what they're thinking. I think it's what's really important about the malls, as Victor mentioned, is to have various options. Um, you have to keep the opposition honest. You know, if you're throwing in the same place, it's easy to stop a mall. Mm. But if you're keeping them honest and you're keeping <coughs> them guessing, you can find a weakness. So we've got various malls. I mean, Coach Akis is, is really an expert um, at that. Um, but again, you know, the Crusaders are one of those New Zealand sides that really know how to stop a mall. Um, you know, if there's one side that can stop our mall, it's, it's probably the Crusaders. So it's going to be a, a big challenge for us this weekend to, to get some reward there. And obviously, they've also got a, a very good mall, mm. you know, and we need to be on our toes, um, you know, a lot of teams like to give the front ball, so you cut down those the middle and the back option, so you almost force them to go to the front, and it makes it easier to stop them all. Um, but the Crusaders have great line-out options. Mm. I mean, they've got someone like Whitelock, who even if there is opposition next yeah. to him, still, he's willing to go up yeah. and he's willing to take that risk and take mm. the ball. You know, so it's it's gonna you know it's gonna be a massive challenge for our pack, completely different to to this uh, past weekend. Game. A couple of weeks ago, you spoke on uh, one of the build-up to the matches about the similarity between the line-out um, plays that the Crusaders employ to generally South African teams, Vic. Um, I, I think it would be important now to touch on that because it's, it's, it's a wonderful uh, place to, to launch your plays from and obviously build momentum right from when you get the ball from the yes, line-out. Um, I must say, I don't have the stats here now, but they must be probably one of the best line-out teams on their own ball and defensively mm -hmm. as well. And I think they've scored quite a few tries uh, mauling as well. So, but the other thing that they do is they almost put dummy mauls on. And then as you um, commit players on defense on stopping that maul, then they play, play out. Yeah. But I think what I've seen about the Lions, they do sack quite well. So when you sack, you don't really put as much numbers in it. Where some of the Australian teams and the New Zealand teams, they almost put five, six guys in to stop that more and that almost give you opportunity around the yeah. edges of the mall. I'm glad you spoke to, you spoke about sacking a mall versus collapsing a mall mm. and maybe it might be valuable Bob to so just touch on the difference for for the viewers because it's it's there are a lot of penalties that get conceded by teams trying to pull down trying to collapse well, uh, malls. As a backline player I'll just explain <laughs> Go it. Go in this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. So yeah. a sack is one player tackling a one player. So it's a tackle it's not a collapse when the mall is generated momentum. So if one player tackles one player, so if the whole bunched up and one player from our team who's on the defensive side pulls down and tackles that player, it's a sack. Immediately. Yeah, yeah. Immediately. so you have to do it before the mall yes. is set. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's the call. And you're actually supposed only to sack one player, yeah. but um, unfortunately that doesn't happen. Normally, Too you do it immediately other. and most teams coach it Who, like that. Who's? You normally take the jumper and one of the supporters. Yeah, and if you get it right who's the, the most important guys in a, in a, a mall? Is it the two supporters of that uh, jumper? Because surely the, they're almost the pillars to, to and keep that ball immediately up. the ball hits the, so, the, uh, hits the ground. I think Warren will come in here as well. The mall is all about setting it. Once it's set, it's very hard yeah. Yeah. to stop a mall. So you have to stop it before it's set. And um, yeah, and that's where the key comes in. That, that supporter is in a very strong position then he's very hard to get down. But a lot of the time, because he's supporting, mm. while he's coming yeah. down, he's actually in a very weak position, and that's what you have to okay. use to get them on the ground. Yeah, I agree completely. I mean, it's, it's your jumper, first of all, the stability of your jumper, and then your lifters. You know, so you want to have a stable base, and once you've got that, I mean, you can, you can move forward. Was it educate me quickly, setting a mall, as Victor speaks about, how difficult or how different is it if you've got front ball, middle or back? You tend to jump towards yeah. the, the back of the line-out. Yes. Is it a very difficult or very yeah. different uh, proposal 
yes. at the back where you don't necessarily have a supporter mm -hmm. immediately on your outside. Yeah, look, I mean, front ball is, is probably one of your easiest, um, you know, drives to stop just because you've got numbers yeah. behind. Mm -hmm. They can almost go at a slight angle, mm -hmm. you know, and you can use a touch line, you know. So, you know, your middle ball, as Vic would know, I mean, that was one of his, his favorite drives. And usually what you try and do is you get your props, you try and manipulate the defense, get your props, your two strongest guys, to lift you. <coughs> and I mean, that's a great stable base to have. And then your back ball as well. So you're, you always tend to one to more, if you could choose, from middle. Yeah, and back. also I think in the middle as well, because uh, the opposition want to contest there, they'll yeah. probably send a jumper up as well. And then it will be hard for them to sack it as well. You can't contest and sack, you know. So yeah. it's, it's, it's risky, but if you get it right, it's, it's, uh, it's a huge rewards. But if the, if the mall does get stopped, as a backline player, it's very hard to attack from a, a mall that's been stopped. You've lost okay. the momentum. 